Hi class, welcome to Advantage. I'm Matt Fisher and I'm your accounting instructor. In today's class, we're going over cash basis accounting versus accrual basis accounting. In cash basis accounting, we recognize transactions in general when we either pay the cash or receive the cash. In other words, we recognize transactions when cash comes in or goes out. This method is not allowed for GAAP purposes. You will recall that GAAP stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. They are the accounting rules that accountants follow. In accrual basis accounting, we recognize the transaction when the transaction has actually taken place. This method matches the revenues and expenses in their proper time period. The cash basis does not necessarily do this. In this video, we will be looking at a revenue transaction and an expense transaction from both the cash perspective and the accrual perspective. Just to be very clear, you would never use both methods. You would use one or the other. Let's look at a revenue transaction. On December 1, the business earned $1,000 doing consulting work. The customer paid the business on January 5th. You can see here, using the cash basis accounting, that we record the transaction on January 5th when we receive the cash. We would debit cash $1,000 and credit consulting revenue $1,000. Cash is an asset and increases with the debit. Consulting revenue is a revenue and increases with a credit. Now, let's take a look at accrual accounting. In the same transaction, we will record our journal entry on December 1st. We will debit accounts receivable $1,000. You will recall that accounts receivable is an asset, and it just means that someone owes us money. On December 1st, we, would, we do the work so we get to record the revenue. Accounts receivable increases $1,000 with a debit, and consulting revenue increases $1,000 with a credit. Later, when the customer pays us, we will debit cash $1,000 and credit the accounts receivable $1,000. Hence, the accounts receivable will now have a zero balance after the customer pays us. Now, let's take a look at an expense transaction. In this transaction, we have a utility bill in the amount of $500 that was received on December 15th. The bill is paid, on, is paid on January 10th of the next year. First, let's take a look at the cash basis journal entry. On January 10th, we debit utility expense $500. This increases our expense. We credit cash $500, which decreases the cash account because we paid the bill. You will notice that this transaction is taking place in January of the next year. This is not the correct accounting period. The actual transaction took place in December. You can see here why the cash method is not allowed for GAAP purposes. We are not matching our expenses in the correct period as the revenues that were earned from those expenses. Let's take a look at the accrual basis. On December 15th, we would record the following transactions. We would debit utility expense $500 and credit accounts payable $500. This transaction is recording the expense and also recording the liability. It shows that we owe $500 to the utility company. Later, when we pay the utility company, we will debit accounts payable and credit cash $500. At this point, you should have a solid understanding of the difference between cash and accrual basis accounting. You should see why accrual basis accounting is preferred and why the cash basis is not allowed per gap. Now for a quick review. Cash basis accounting recognizes revenue when cash is received and recognizes expenses when the cash is paid. Accrual basis accounting recognizes revenue when earned and recognizes expenses when incurred. Accrual basis accounting will use accounts such as accounts receivable and accounts payable showing what customers owe us and what we owe to others, respectively. Finally, cash basis accounting violates the matching principle. 
In the next lecture, we'll be looking at adjusting entries. There are four different types of adjustments that need to be reviewed at the end of the accounting period. Over the next several videos, we'll be looking at these adjustments. Well class, I hope this video has helped you. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy the next video.